Hello people of the internet, welcome to Paint to Life, episode 47, the YouTube channel where I take tiny plastic miniatures, throw some acrylic paint on them, and breathe them to life with storytelling so you might learn something new on the subject or take the story to use as your own. A friend of mine has reptiles, I mean a lot of reptiles, and a bit of an unhealthy obsession with pickles. In fact, he runs his very own successful YouTube channel about the topic, reptiles that is, not pickles. But there is one beauty he does not have in his repeticulture. I'm learning new words for this episode. So this week I painted one up for him as a gift. And in true paint life fashion, let me share with you the origination of an entire species of snake, the radiant rainbow boas. I'm GMA Tank, let's get painting. All right, last week we painted death itself and found out a little bit about death from a variety of cultures from Earth's history. We also learned about the tragic story of the seven people snowed in at the bed and breakfast in Vermont last fall. Uh, if you missed it, you can check out here with the link or in the description below, and you should before Netflix makes a big budget miniseries about it and completely outshines my telling of the story. So, let me ask, do any of you keep snakes? Snacks? Danger noodles? If so, does anyone have a Peruvian rainbow boa? These beautiful snakes are highly sought after for their iridescent skin. Over collection and deforestation of rainforests for agriculture, ranching and development is significantly decreasing their populations. They range from red to orange to mahogany brown with dark ring patterns on their bodies. They also have a prehensile tail to help them climb, but they're truly not arboreal snakes. The rainbow boa is a medium sized species with a round body ranging in length from four to six feet with females growing larger than their male counterparts. Although not especially large, their head is distinctly wider than their neck, and they have three parallel black stripes running down their head. Since this snake requires a high humidity environment, they are regarded as an intermediate to difficult snake to keep in captivity. Now when they are younger, they are more prone to bite due to natural defense instincts, but as they become more used to handling, they tend to calm down. Their lifespan in the wild is estimated to be about 10 years, but in captivity they can live up to 30 years. But who is our rainbow boa? Millennia ago, on the lost continent known as Mestica, there lived a culture of people known as the Nexalans. Compared to other Mastican cultures, the Nexalans were leaner, taller, they had angular features, and the men never sported facial hair. They were a very militant people, constantly warring between tribes and other neighboring societies. As a rule, they were strong and intelligent, but often lacked wisdom in their decision making. Nexelan culture placed a strong emphasis on aesthetics and did not care as much about substance. A prime example was the Great Pyramid of Nexel with its grandiose mosaics and gaudy colors. They lived in jungles and high atop mountain ranges near the equator and were exceptional masons and stonecutters. To appease their many gods, they participated in human sacrifice. Blood was viewed as a potent source of nourishment for the Matsican deities and the sacrifice of a living creature was a powerful blood offering. The king of the Nexalans was named Iktaka. Iktaka was a handsome man. He wore extravagant headdresses with orange feathers, and he had solid black circles, within circles, tattooed down his arms. They resembled many eyes on top of his body. Like his forefathers before him, Iktaka would arrange great sporting events and feasts that culminated with human sacrifices for the rain god Pluitiki from atop their great pyramids. One particular summer, however, the Nexalans were involved in a great conflict, and they actually forgot their offering. They just forgot to make the thing. What was their great punishment for such a dishonorable act? Nothing. Nothing happened. Despite their mistake, the rain still fell, the crops still grew. The war campaign continued. And for months, Iktaka intentionally ignored the tradition of sacrifice, maybe to see what would happen. Eventually, the young king began to claim to his people that Pluitiki, the rain god, was so impressed with Iktaka, he saw him as an equal, and they did not need to present tribute any longer. Now, you can imagine the gods didn't really like that, and one time, upon making such a claim, there was a great crash of thunder and lightning, and from a rainbow descending from the sky, a blue heron sat atop it. It was the god, Pluitiki. The waterfowl strode about in front of all the bowing Nexalans. He made his grievances heard loud and clear. He had been offended by their lack of sacrifices, a lack of tribute. And in order to fix such a terrible slight, Iktaka, king of all the Nexalans, must bring Pluitiki what lay at the end of the rainbow. Iktaka confidently agreed to this completely. He boasted this feat would be easy for such a specimen as him, as he was so fit he could run to the end of the rainbow in one day. Now Pluitihi was affronted by the gall of this man. 
So he commanded that Iktaka, without being aided, would make the journey alone, crawling on his belly the whole way. And with that, with a flash, all of his lavish clothing, jewelry, adornments fell to the ground around him, as the Nexalans king was transformed into a long, featureless, brown snake. Now be gone, Quattle, but know that no rain shall again fall upon your lands until you are successful in bringing me that which lies beneath the rainbow. The rainbow then ascended back into the heavens, taking the blue hair and form of Pluitiki with it. The royal snake awkwardly slithered, contorted into a mass at the feet of his viceroy. It raised its head, tongue flicking the air, wanting to be picked up. Yes, your majesty, he exclaimed, and no sooner had he lifted the snake up off the ground that he turned into dust in front of everyone and blew away, in front of all the horrified onlookers. So Iktaka began that fateful journey alone, by slithering down the pyramid and heading west in the direction of the falling sun to find the base of a rainbow. Pushing along the jungle floor, through the moist and vegetation reeking of rot, he was nauseous. However, he found that the humidity was pleasing on his scales, almost like a healing balm on cracked skin. After traveling for a day, he was hungry, and despite not being able to see very well in his new form, at nighttime, the pits in his nose and acute sense of smell gave him the ability to see. See? What gave him the ability to see? The heat given off by mammals like the baby piglets hiding in the darkness. As the days go on and pass without rain, the humidity and moisture had begun to dry up, and Ichitaka in turn finds that he himself is drying out. He senses a direct correlation between the humidity of the jungle and his strength and desire to push ahead. Along the way, he encounters an old man on the road who recognizes the intelligence in the snake's eyes. Now everyone across the kingdom knew about Ichitaka's plight, yet the old man still offered to help the king with a bath and a ride on the cart for some of the way. Iktaka, despite being exhausted and wanting nothing more than to get clean, had learned a lesson, and he was not willing to risk any further penalties or punishments on this innocent man. He decided he would complete the journey as he had promised, according to the rules. Four more days passed, the fields were dry, the crops were dying, and literally, Iktaka was drying out. His gentle skin was cracked and bleeding, his mouth was parched, yet he saw the end of a rainbow in front of him. It was there he finds the heron, Pluitiki, standing in a puddle, laughing at him. I was worried you had abandoned your people. It mockingly taunted. I hope your fellow man learned something from your punishment. I will restore the rain, but you will keep this form forever as a lesson for all mankind to respect the gods. Iktaka's anger and frustration at the betrayal boiled over. He felt he had learned his lesson, he felt he had paid his dues, he felt he had earned a second chance. He hissed, No, I instead choose to be a lesson for all gods to respect the determination of mortals. With all his might, he sprung forward and entangled the god Pluitiki, then proceeded to constrict and swallow the entire bird and the rainbow from the sky whole. Iktaka's snake body shed its brown scales and turned vibrant orange with concentric brown circles within circles running down the length and a luminous iridescent streak on the flanks that shone like a rainbow in the sun. It was then that clouds formed and rain began to fall on his kingdom. Iktaka had redeemed himself, saved his people, and now would be known as Koza Tioto. The legend says that Koza Tioto's children, now known as rainbow boas, are born into this world at the ends of rainbows wherever they appear. Finding a rainbow boa in the wild is a sign of fortune, strength, and perseverance. Keeping one at home as a pet is a friendly reminder to the gods to think twice before meddling into the affairs of men. Koza Tioto, the rainbow boa.
All right, what did you think of the Legend of the Rainbow Boa? Fortunately, I don't have it for the shelf this week. As I said at the beginning, it was a gift for my friend Adam over at Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles as part of our collaboration this week. If this is your first time here to Paint the Life, welcome. If you like my storytelling, please click subscribe. I release new videos every Saturday, and the painting video up there gets released on subsequent Tuesday. Also, feel free to check out any of my past episodes in the playlist links above in YouTube. You might find something there that tickles your fancy. Also, if anyone is interested in giving miniature painting a try, I strongly suggest you do it at least once. A very fun hobby and easy to get into. Head on down to your friendly local gaming store, pick up a model, some paints, and get painting. Make sure you tell them GMA Tank sent you for that special discount. That's all I have for this week. Stay safe, everyone. I'm GMA Tank. Wash your hands, people. So in true paint to life fashion, let me share with you the origination of an origination. 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 I'm dumb. And in true paint to life fashion, let me share with you the origination of an entire species of snake. <laughs>